The Immortal John Hancock here with a marathon video covering all things Nintendo 64. I'm an avid collector of the Nintendo system and you know there's lots of different opinions about the Nintendo 64 but I thought it'd be cool to take many of my videos that centered around this classic console put them all together in over two hours of video. And so I hope you enjoy this. Good games, bad games, overlooked games, cheap games. There is something in this video for everyone that is a big Nintendo fan or an N64 fan. So sit back, relax. You may want to grab some popcorn. Here we go. Even though this is going to be a collection of videos I previously posted on my channel, I thought I'd share here my N64 collection. And don't worry about the subsets, I will include those in this video. But you know, I really enjoy playing the Nintendo 64. I really enjoyed collecting it, and I thought this video would be helpful to help other fellow collectors or people that just wanna play games on emulation. There's something in this video for everyone, and you know, I really do like collecting for this console. Now, a lot of people have different opinions about the Nintendo 64. Some are good, some are bad, some are in between. But, you know, I do think that the library could have been larger. And the focus of this video is going to be on North American games and my North American collection. But you are going to have your memories and experiences. If you've played the Nintendo 64, definitely in the comments, I want to hear your thoughts about this console and really hope you enjoy this marathon video. Here we go. Greatest hit sets and subset collecting are a lot of fun and more attainable than going after a complete collection. The Immortal John Hancock here with another collector video to help you out collecting. You know, I, I have several people watch my channel and sometimes they ask, you know, hey, what is, what is every game included with a particular subset? and I've had a lot of fun going after these and sharing that information with you. In today's video, we're looking at Nintendo 64. And what Nintendo 64 did is they did a player's choice subset. They took some of their best selling games and relabeled them and re-released them in gold boxes. And that was their greatest hits subset. There was some other games included that just had stickers, but in today's video, we're gonna look at that gold box player's choice subset of 15 games. These 15 games are some of the best on the collection. And in today's video, I share with you what these games look like, including cart and manual. Hope this helps fellow collectors. Let's take a look. Here is the original box versus the player's choice box. Each cart has a player's choice badge on it, minus one. Many of the manuals do have a variation ending in a one, not all, but some. And here are all the games spined out. It gets its nickname Gold Box. Really, it's just the side of the box that's gold, but it looks really cool. And you're probably wondering, how are your games protected? I actually got these cases uh, cover protectors from Evo Retro, and the link will be below for those. Here is the game's 1080 snowboarding. Fairly difficult to find and does have a manual reprint ending in a number one. I had to piecemeal many of these uh, together as many online auctions often have the original release manual, not the, not the re-release, or they don't have the cart with the player's choice badge. It's very frustrating sometimes to find a complete copy altogether. Here's Cruisin' USA, kind of a classic racing game for Nintendo 64 with its unique shaped manual. I played this arcade game quite a bit back in the day. I, it appeared at almost every Walmart that I went to. And here's Diddy Kong Racing. I definitely preferred Mario Kart over this, but I know some people really like this racer. Did you play it? Did you play this one back in the day? I want to hear your stories. Comment below. I have so many fond memories of playing GoldenEye back in the day. Such an iconic, classic console first person shooter. Oh my goodness. And so, yes. The, the, the issue with finding some of these is the box. The box is typically crushed or creased. It's really getting more difficult to find these 
in excellent shape. And so it's definitely gonna cost more to find a box in nice shape. For many out there, this is a childhood classic. Ocarina of Time is just fantastic and one of the best games on the Nintendo 64. I had to pay uh, quite a bit for this one. It's not rare, but sought after and finding one in good shape is getting more difficult. Mario Kart 64, so much fun and several people out there played this one to death. It also means that finding one in decent shape is more difficult. And so here it is, here's Mario Kart 64. The manual has been reprinted and yet another manual that ends in the number one in the far right corner. One of my all time favorites on the Nintendo 64, I remember reading this in an Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine. And oh my goodness, I absolutely love this game. Simply just an, an excellent addition to the library. You must play this game and here is the player's choice version. A little bit harder to find. I can honestly say I've played probably the first three levels of this game more than anything. Very challenging game. Uh, it was reprinted by Limited Run Games, but here is the player's choice version, which often gets overlooked. This game gets overlooked. It is a decent Star Wars game, but that level of difficulty definitely ramps up as you progress further in the game and becomes very frustrating. Star Fox 64, an excellent game with awesome multiplayer and yet another game that had a re-released manual ending in the number one. And so this game is a must have for owners and one I played quite a bit back in the day. The granddaddy of all Nintendo 64 releases and the reason many picked up the Nintendo 64 in the first place, Super Mario 64. Here it is, here is the re-release of it with its gold box and complete copy. Definitely, I'm surprised, but I, I guess I shouldn't be, that this game is going up in value. Turok, one of the bigger third-party releases on the Nintendo 64. This one was popular enough to get a re-release, as well as getting a remaster. And this is available on several current platforms. But here it is, the Nintendo 64 version. Nintendo 64 had some amazing wrestling games. And here's WCW versus NWO World Tour. Did you remember playing this one? Who did you wrestle with? Comment below as I would love to hear your stories. A fairly overlooked title and cart only is relatively still cheap. Wave Race 64, a fun racer. This is one I need to go back and play. Whenever I see Yoshi's story, I think of Erin from Erin Plays. She was a guest on my channel. She's got a great channel herself. I wish Nintendo 64 had more games like this. Very colorful game with unique graphics. I know, there's going to be comments. Well, what about this? What about that? Well, there's several other variations. And there's these corner sticker games, such as Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. And it wasn't a gold box, but it was part of the player's choice series. And it didn't have a gold box, but it did have a cart variation. Here is my complete copy. Then you have games such as NBA Courtside that only had a sticker on the cellophane. This one is getting pretty tough to find. Sealed with the sticker. Then you had game releases such as Super Smash Brothers, which are kind of an oddity because they had a player's choice on the actual cart re-release, but there was no box, at least no box that I've ever found or I've never found or seen a box picture released in the public. While this is a fairly small subset and you can find most of the games loose, fairly affordable, those boxes and manuals and finding complete copies for some of these is going to be expensive. But the good news is the majority of all these games are some of the best offered on the Nintendo 64. So you're picking up a game that is a lot of fun to play and it is a collectible as ironically some of these players choice 
versions of the games are more difficult to find than the normal copies of the games. But I enjoy collecting. I hope this list helps fellow collectors out there. And I did it to help you out in your collecting journey. Let me know what you think. There is a lot to collecting this subset. There is a lot of variations. I just showed a basic set of this collection. What do you think? What was your favorite game? Tell me your stories of playing some of these classic Nintendo 64 games. You know, I can't believe we are going on 25 years since the Nintendo 64 came out. Holy cow. And you know, it's such uh, a very misunderstood console. There's a lot of people that grew up with it and love it. And there's some people that just really never really got into it. But I wanted to share today the fun of going after this subset. I hope it helps fellow collectors out there. Thank you so much for the ongoing support as now I'm marching beyond 100,000 subs and the sky's the limit. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week, doing lots of different videos, reviews, collector videos such as this, as well as new content. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care. The Nintendo 64, an iconic console that is now 25 years old. Everybody has their favorite, whether it's GoldenEye, Mario Kart 64, Super Smash Brothers, the list goes on. That top 10% of the library of Nintendo 64 is amazing. There's some amazing games there, and a lot of people, that's their favorite. I'm not talking about any of those games today. I'm talking about the worst of the worst. That's right. The N64 had some stinkers, and I'm continuing my bad game series, and I'm going to look at those games today. I've thought about this. I've had a lot of fun doing bad games, these games I own. And in today's video, I'm taking the worst of the worst for the Nintendo 64. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn. Let's take a look. After the success of the animated series Batman Beyond, there was a movie. And this is a game that's a tie-in with that movie. This is a straight up brawler. How bad can it be? When I first heard about this game, I was rather excited because I love myself some brawlers. But then unfortunately I played it. And first and foremost, the graphics are terrible. And you know, graphics aren't gonna destroy a game. You know, I've played a lot of games that I've enjoyed that had bad graphics, but this just is not a good game whatsoever. It's very repetitive. You know, same moves over and over again can take out most enemies. Enemies are generic, level design's generic. It's just not fun to play whatsoever. You do get some different suits with different abilities, but I couldn't get myself into this. You know, it really, really is a bad looking N64 game. Now, I do have an HDMI mod on my N64, so playing this on a standard N64, it's gonna look really bad but it just is repetitive. You know, take out an enemy, advance to the next room, rinse, repeat. And what I found too, especially early on in the game, is that there is some recycling of level design. And so I hate that. I hate that in which uh, some games, you know, they add length to a level just by putting in the same room design. Oh my goodness, I can't stand that. Avoid this one, this is pretty bad. As you know, if you're a big fan of the series or, or love the movie, maybe check it out. But you know, it's it's not a good game. Uh, it's it's very very generic. There are some different suits, and you can get some extra gadgets. But you know, it's just to me, Batman doesn't work as just an action game. I kind of like the sleuthing of the more modern day Batman games. A lot of fun to check out. But the music's good. I hope you like this track because you're gonna hear it over and over and over again. Oh my, oh my, I just, I can't stand that when a game just recycles one track over and over and over again. It's so annoying, it's cheap, this is a shoddy brawler, avoid this piece of junk. As Mortal Kombat was wanting to branch out into other different games, we got Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero, an action platform fighting game with some light RPG elements. It's sad to know that a game like this probably had many different play testers, but unfortunately, nobody had the power to say that the gameplay was broken. There's several problems with this game, but the biggest one is that you have to press B 
to change direction of your character. That right there really, really kills this game and its fluidity. Also, your analog stick moves you in more of a running fashion. You have to use the control pad to walk. And there's so many one hit deaths in each level, it just makes it frustrating to play. You have to creep along with the control pad. Oh, it just is just not fun whatsoever. The level design is, is pretty shoddy as well. And this is coming from a Mortal Kombat fan. I grew up with the original trilogy and love the series in general. This is just not Mortal Kombat for me. I, you know, kudos to them for branching out and trying something new, but it just doesn't work. The PlayStation version I do hear is worse, but this is still pretty bad and one of the worst N64 games to grace the console just because it doesn't work. Terrible level design, not fun to play, and broken control. I do like the experience that you get as you progress in that. I, I think if this had better gameplay and level design, it would be fun to play. Unfortunately, uh, with the broken control, this is just not fun to play whatsoever. Power Rangers were huge and it was everywhere. I'm a fan of Power Rangers, but somewhere along the line, they kind of lost their way. And this game is really bad. This is based on the eighth TV series, full title Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Oh man. So you start off with this terrible overhead perspective where you're going around, you're either rescuing people or cleaning up the environment. There's actually three parts of the game where you have these vehicle levels, which are some of the worst because the control is just terrible. You're just going up and down this road. You're trying to put out fires. And you can tell a game is broken when they always include, you know, health pickups and power-ups along the way because they know it's broken. They know it's hard to control. They know that you're going to need this to get through many of the levels. The other thing about this game is it's really short. Uh, it's about an hour to beat the whole thing. I think Power Ranger games can be fun, and this is not one of them. This is one of the worst Power Ranger games ever made. Even the Megazord fighting scenes are terrible. Whatever level you're playing in this game, it's just going to be bad altogether. Sometimes an overlooked terrible game for the Nintendo 64, and that's Carmageddon 64. You take a wonderful PC series and try to adapt it to the N64 console and then dumb it down. Nope. I'm almost lost for words on how ugly this game is. And then the control, and then the frame rate, and then where are the people? So they replaced the people with these zombies, so when you hit them, it just splat into like green pixels. Lame. Takes all the fun of the PC game and just reduces it to this. Just uh, very substandard, you know. Uh, Titus was known for stinkers. We're gonna get to the big one. But this is just as bad, I think, as Superman 64. This is just completely broken. You know, and, and when a game's bad, it doesn't matter how many modes that you include, how many unlockables, how many levels. It's just not fun. You know, I feel like I'm controlling a box. It looks like a box. It's got terrible graphics. Uh, sometimes you can get turned around on the, 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 the levels. Uh, everything about this game is just broken. And, you know, people probably saw the name and anticipated that this was going to be like a PC port. And we're completely disappointed with this. You know, game companies were smart. It's hard to make a new IP. It's better to take an established known game or franchise and make a port of it for something else. That way you don't have to establish yourself. People know a game and they'll pick it up knowing that that previous game was fun. And I can't think of how disappointed people were when they played this for the first time. Avoid this at all costs. Same company brought this turd to us. And yes, the big one, Superman 64. This has to be the worst game on the Nintendo 64. And this is Superman 64. In so many time, things went wrong with this. Sealed, you know, uh, when they're talking about the kryptonite fog in this game, you know that they sacrificed <laughs> resources to make this game just plain no terrible. You know, you take one of the greatest superheroes of all time and you have him fly through rings for the first level. Come on. 
it, the, the control is really touchy. You miss two rings and that's it. You got to start over again. And just really, really terrible control and level design. I mean, I'm not gonna play a Superman game to fly through rings. You know, I think of the amazing Superman arcade game and some of the previous 16-bit Superman games were pretty fun. This is just plain awful. I'm sure there's a great backstory of someone overseeing this project. I'm sure it was a nightmare in development, but oh my, <laughs> just, just really bad controls really bad it is so easy to fly off course and then if you miss two rings a few rings then you're done you have to do it all over again it's just oh yep this one there and just everything about this design and everything about this game it deserves it deserves the hate honestly because you know this was released people paid full price for this game Oh, and I'm sure there's some people out there that will defend this saying it's a good game. No, it's not. So you fly through the rings and then you have to do like a puzzle or a challenge at the end. So I made it through. Yay, I made it through. Yay. Now I have to pick up two cars. Well, don't read the instruction booklet because it's wrong. You don't automatically pick up things. And if you fail this, guess what? Yep, you got to do the rings over again. Those are my picks for the worst games on the Nintendo 64. What are yours? I know that there are some other games out there I didn't put on the list. You let me know what they are and I might include them in a future video if I decide to go back and tell you more about bad Nintendo 64 games. There are so many bad games out there and I'm having a lot of fun doing this series. I'm going to be continuing it. Thank you so much for continuing to tune into my channel and watching my videos. It is most appreciated. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a great day. The Nintendo 64, a classic gaming console that many people grew up with and experience. And in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing my current modern day setup for the Nintendo 64, and gonna be talking about maybe some products you don't know are on the market. And this video, I use products from Stone Age Gamer. They sent me some and I purchased some in this video and want to discuss the many ways you can upgrade and maximize what you can get out of the Nintendo 64. It's a great classic gaming console. Uh, you know, I have many happy memories of playing on my Nintendo 64 and I know many out there have some familiar experiences and grew up with it or maybe experienced it after it came out but in today's video we're going to talk about the many products and ways you can upgrade your nintendo 64 so sit back relax here we go first up is a region free bracket that you can apply to your n64 by taking the six screws off the bottom of your nintendo 64 and removing the jumper pack or expansion pack i'll talk about that later and then your North American console will be able to play imports, which typically are cheaper. This is a money saving option and highly recommend it. We've all had nightmare stories of losing saves on memory packs. This is a new memory pack that does not use a battery and it's the forever pack 64 it comes in different colors. And I think it's awesome. The controller that I recommend is the Brawler 64 Wireless. I've had a lot of great luck using this controller and it also comes with a dongle where you can use memory packs and plug them in for games such as Gauntlet 64. Fantastic game, highly recommend playing it. And you know, these are great modern products where you can utilize on your original Nintendo 64 with a memory pack that's gonna work every time and it's not gonna go out, as well as a wireless controller. You may not be a big fan of the original controller. It's nice that there are many other options to game and use alternative controllers or some other companies. Uh, Retrobit makes a aftermarket wireless controller as well. And Retro Fighters also makes a wired controller if you wanna go that route. There is the Ultra HDMI, which is not available for internal modding. There's also the Pixel FX, which is also sold out, but Stone Age Gamer does offer the installation service 
in the event that you do come across it. There's also the Super 64, which is in stock. This is an expensive add-on, but this is a simple way of hooking up your Nintendo 64. It doesn't require mod to any HD TV. And here is a simple uh, comparison I did in a former video years back using a Retro Tink 2X before the 5X was on the market, comparing it to some cheap Hyperkin cables and wanted to show some of the similarities and there's pros and cons. Now, the Super 64 is not the best way of hooking up your Nintendo 64, but it might be the easiest, but it is expensive. Now, in the event that you can find official uh, Nintendo 64 S video cables and you have the ability to uh, combine it with a retro tink 5x or maybe even just want to go old school on a crt you will notice a difference it's not perfect and every hookup has its pros and cons but you know for me i you know years back got an ultra hdmi mod and that is the way that i go i wanted to so show some comparisons from a former video that i did i'll put a link below for the entire video if you want to check it out the prices may not be accurate on this comparison list, but there are pros and cons. I wanted to show this. This is also from that former video that I did. As you can see, there's lots of things to consider when getting a video upgrade for your Nintendo 64. Another upgrade I highly recommend is the EverDrive 64. These have been harder to get in the past but they are available to pre-order. I purchased this one from Stone Age Gamer and I got a nice crimson color here. And these can do quite a bit. It, it does a lot more than just play N64 ROMs. It's kind of cool as you can play homebrews and hacks. That's the main reason I got it is that when homebrews for the Nintendo 64 come out, I can share them on my channel as I have covered a few previous ones that actually were put on physical cart this last year on my channel but here's one that came out in 2022 it also can play that's right game boy color games and nes as well absolutely stunning and fantastic additional thing that these can do i'm actually capturing this from a nintendo 64 looks stunning and amazing with my ultra hdmi mod but for many people out there, you're gonna want to play the classics as the EverDrive 64, the newest version, can do just about everything. It can play hacks, homebrews, and just original releases. As I know, many of you are gonna wanna play games such as Super Mario 64. Now, it does not come with any ROMs. You're gonna have to supply your own ROMs. There's many places where you can do that. I'm not gonna tell you where those are, but you know, if you're wanting to go and utilize the EverDrive 64. This is just a sample of the many things it can do. It also can enable cheats and other options as well. You know, this is not a full review of the EverDrive 64, but I do highly recommend it if you're wanting to get the full utilization of your Nintendo 64 and you do not want to purchase individual carts. Some are very hard to find these days. Now, there are other accessories you may want to consider. There is the transfer pack, which works with very specific games, such as Pokemon Stadium. You have the Rumble Pack, and you know that is something that you are not gonna use with a wireless setup, but if you're going old school, you may wanna consider it. it works with Star Fox 64 and others. That's what it looks like. As well as, it's okay to go with old school, original memory pack as many are still working you can save money and you may be able to find these at a used game store uh, just know that uh, sometimes your memory can be corrupted now the expansion pack this is an accessory that is very difficult to find now i can't believe how expensive it is but there are several games donkey kong 64 and majora's mask are ones specifically that require it did you know about all these upgrades what do you think do you game with a modern setup or do you go old school on a classic CRT and call good? Or do you just emulate, which is totally fine if you want to go that route as well. And just want to thank everybody for coming to my channel. I cover lots of different things, everything from Atari to Xbox. A little bit of retro, a little bit of modern, and a whole bunch of fun. 
And so it, what is your favorite uh, of what I showed today? And make sure to go to Stone Age Gamer. The link is below where you can check out the many products that they cover. And they support everything from Atari to Xbox. They have lots of EverDrive cartridges if you want to go that route. And upgrades and replacement parts too. As you know, these consoles are getting older and they sometimes need things to work. And a lot of people don't know where to go, where where to get these retro gaming products, especially if you don't have a local retro game store. You can check out Stone Age Gamer. I am a customer and I've been a longtime fan of them, so check them out. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day. The Immortal John Hancock here, and I'm blessed to be at Double Jump Video Games in Vancouver, Washington. And I'm here with Sick Cooper. Uh, how's it going, guys? It's going to be awesome talking about one of our favorite consoles, the Nintendo 64. Yeah. If you guys have seen any of our videos or any of my videos, you'll know that 64 is my favorite console, so I'm excited to talk about it. So... I want to say that our list that we're coming up with today, it's not the top 10. It's games that we think that you might enjoy going back and replaying. These are some uh, childhood favorites, maybe some games that we came uh, uh, to appreciate along the journey, and ones that we think that you may like. These aren't necessarily our favorite games or anything like that. These are just games that we enjoy, and hopefully you will as well. All right. First up for me would be F-Zero X. I don't know exactly when I played this classic, but I really like this game uh, just for the fact it's just a fun futuristic racer. You know, I was a big fan of games such as like Wipeout and Wipeout XL on PlayStation. And I don't know um, what year exactly I played. I know I didn't play it when it came out, but it's just a fun, fast racer. Um, I like those type of futuristic racing games. Uh, I know the N64 had a ton of racing games, but I just really like that one. Fun, and it's fairly affordable, too. And a game that's similar on 64 would be Extreme G. Mm -hmm. It's another, like, really fast racing game, so that one's much easier to find. Awesome. <laughs> My first pick is Mischief Makers, and this is a very fun uh, side-scrolling, like, 2D platformer, which is really funny. It's got a lot of quirkiness to it, and this is a game that I did play as a kid. I didn't have it. My friend owned it, but... I played it with him a lot. I also played it when I was older, beat the game all the way through. It has a really unique mechanic where you can like pick things up and shake them. And when you shake them, the character goes, shake, shake. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, if you enjoy platformers, you'll probably like this one, but it is a 2D one, which is unique on the 64 because yeah. they just came out with 3D, so everyone was going to 3D. But this game is really awesome and awesome. highly recommend it. All right. Next one, I have a funny story behind, and that is Perfect Dark. Now, I was working at a software etc. when this game came out. In fact, I have my name badge here, <laughs> and it actually says, I like Perfect Dark on it. This is actually my original badge, and what's kind of cool is I was a big GoldenEye fan, and I don't think this is probably as good as GoldenEye. Some people may disagree with that. This is a great multiplayer experience on the N64. I know that the Xbox Live has an updated version of this. If you have Xbox, you can play it there. But this is like the kitchen sink for first-person shooters on the Nintendo 64. Great experience, great story. It does take the expansion pack. There's tons of unlockables and characters and weapons, and I just really appreciate this game. Now, uh, you know, for some people, they've moved on from it, but I still think if you have an original N64, and fairly, fairly affordable, if I do remember. Yeah. And this is a, a great, reasonably off, uh, reasonably priced game on the N64, and I highly recommend it. Definitely. So my next one, um, we, know, uh, we said that these aren't our favorite games, but this is my number one favorite game of all time, so I had to include it. It is Super Mario 64. This is one of the first games that I beat as a kid, and just everything about the game is nearly perfect in my opinion, aside from the camera. Um, but I usually go back and beat this game every year or two. Wow. I still play it. <laughs> and um, when we're testing stuff here at the store, if we're testing an N64 and someone's playing this game, I'm like, hey, let me test this one real quick. And uh, I 100% it every time I play it. It's super, super fun. 
Um, awesome 3D platformer, and it was released on the Switch as part of the Mario 3D All-Stars. That's the most recent version that I played through, and it's it's amazing. Both versions are, are great, so can't recommend this one enough. Fun fact about N64 hardware, it was the game that the hardware was built around to make it fully run as best as possible. Just a great platform. Definitely. All right, next up is a game that I don't think I fully appreciated until I started seriously collecting Nintendo 64. I had several people recommend this game to me. I heard other people talk about it. I saw it everywhere in tons of rental stores, and this is Beetle Adventure Racing. And the big thing with this game, I think, is the track design and the multiple ways you could go through and play this game. Absolutely a fantastic racer, one of the better racer games. It kind of gets overlooked by some other more popular titles, but this is a great game, especially if you like racing games. If you haven't checked this out, I do believe it's an N64 exclusive, and it's wonderful to play. It's got awesome multiplayer as well. Highly recommend it, and one that I like to go back and just mess around with. You know, for me, with my busy schedule, I don't have a ton of time to play, like, long RPG-style games. So these types of games, for you to kind of get a quick game experience in, like, 15, 20 minutes, yes, awesome. Yeah, I've heard great things about that one as well. <laughs> my next pick is another childhood mm. favorite, and that is Milo's Astro Lanes. Mm. I never hear anybody talk about this game, but... Um, Going back, it's not, I can understand why people don't talk about it, it's not the best game, but it is a very funny, quirky bowling game, and uh, it's like, it's all like space themed, and <clears throat> there's like different balls you can use, some of them are more regular, some of them can be like giant or have different special abilities, and then there's like, there can be obstacles on the, on the, the lane and stuff like that, and all sorts <laughs> of different funny characters to choose from. It's got a lot of personality, which is, I think, why I like it so much, because it's not, I mean, like, Wii Sports Bowling is amazing, that's like a great bowling game, but it's very, it's very plain. Okay. Um, there's no real personality to it. With this one, it's just, the, the quirkiness is turned up to 10, everything about it is just super funny and over the top, and it's a pretty fun little game. All right. I'm definitely going to go back and check that out now. Yeah, it's good on multiplayer, for sure. All right, this next one is my favorite game on the N64. If you're gonna, if, if it's gonna be one game that is my favorite to go back and replay, and that's Rogue Squadron. When this came out and the magazines were talking about it, that's how I got my information back in the day. It wasn't the internet. It was flipping through different game magazines. I do believe EGM had a big spread about this game. And I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I was blown away like this. I was a big fan of original flight sims like TIE Fighter, and this is more of an arcade experience. It's definitely that third person, but you can go into first person mode. Tons of awesome levels that kind of fill in the story you know, that weren't in the movies, and you see different locations, but you see also classic locations that were from the films. You can fly different ships. There's tons of unlockables. You can upgrade your weapons. And I got a gold medal on every single level. And it just, I went through this and played it over and over and over again. There's challenges, there's really neat, unlockable ships. I absolutely love this game. And if you're a Star Wars fan, look no further than Star Wars Rogue Squadron. There's also a greatest hits of it, uh, sorry, a million seller. And so uh, for people that collect variations, there's that as well. Awesome. My next pick is. The video game that has the best theme song of all time, and that is Buck Bumble. And I don't know why the theme song is so good, but <laughs> it's it's perfect. If you guys haven't heard it, you need to look it up on YouTube. Buck Bumble theme song. It's like it's like an EDM masterpiece. <laughs> but this is a, a pretty fun game. Yeah. The controls are very very difficult to get used to when you first play it, but just give it some time, you will you will learn how to play. Hmm. But um, I think this game is most fun on multiplayer, uh, but it is a, it's a 3D, I don't know if you want to call it a platformer, I would say it's like a platformer mixed with like a flying game, because you're playing as the bee and you fly around, but you can land and walk and stuff, but you basically play as a bee and you have guns, and that's really all you need to know. <laughs> um, the multiplayer is where I spent the most time when I was a kid, because we, we played this game a lot and you just basically select a level, you each get a bee, there's guns around the map, and you try to kill the other bee. Awesome. So, 
a lot of fun. Um, another game that has a lot of personality and charm. It's it's not really like a lot of other N64 games. So uh, be prepared. All right, haha, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and this is another one that I don't think I fully appreciated growing up, but talking to other collectors, talking to other gamers that love the Nintendo 64, highly recommended this, and this was Space Station Silicone Valley. This is kind of a hard game to explain, because initially I thought it was just a straight up platformer, it's not. There's a lot of puzzle aspects to it. You're taking the control of different animals that have different powers, and you have to use them in conjunction to like get through the level. There's unlockables, there's different game sequences, there's fighting in it, there's uh, racing, and they have like a nod to like Wave, Wave Race 64 in it. This is a really fantastic game, and, and graphically, you know, it's not as impressive as maybe some of the rare uh, releases on, on the Nintendo 64. It has a lot of charm, a lot of character, a lot of little nods to other games, and I think that if you're a fan of platformers or puzzlers, you definitely have to check this out. It sometimes gets overlooked. It's more known about now, but if you haven't played this, this is one I recommend going back and checking out. It's awesome. It's a little hard to find, too. Yeah. It's not... Not super rare, but uh, we we maybe get that game once every five or six months. Wow, and so. it's done by Take-Two Interactive, so there's that going for it. Last and definitely not least is... 1080 Snowboarding. This is another game that I had growing up. Um, really, really fun snowboarding game. Uh, made by Nintendo, so you know it's going to have that like you know top-notch quality to it. And the soundtrack on this game is amazing. There is a Japanese release of the soundtrack on CD, but it's really expensive. Um, but really, really fun game. There's a there's a bunch of different characters you can choose from, and there's not a ton of levels. I think there's only like there's only like five or six levels, and I think one to unlock. Um, but it's a really fun game. It's there are some like tricks and stuff that you can do. There's also like a trick attack mode with like a, a snow half pipe and everything. But uh, multiplayer is where it's at in this game. Um, just a really, really fun game. And the, the level design is awesome. The characters are cool. And like I said, the soundtrack is amazing. All right. So those are our 10 picks. And where can people find you and your awesome channel? So you, you, I used to go by Sick Cooper. We just recently rebranded our entire channel to Double Jump Video Games, which is the name of our store here. We do um, videos at least five days a week um, so. about the store. We do we show all the trade-ins, um, repairing stuff, changing batteries on Pokemon games. Uh, we do staff pick segments in the videos where we recommend a game or a movie or something like that, and just all sorts of other shenanigans and everything at the store. So if you just search up Double Jump Video Games on YouTube, you'll find us. Well, thank you so much for being on my channel. It's a pleasure sharing your knowledge you obviously are a gamer at heart and definitely check out his channel and if you're in the area check out double jump video games nice store and i plan on sharing more about his store on a future video awesome thank you for coming in this is the immortal john hancock and say cooper you have a good day today i'm going to discuss and share 10 games that you can still find relatively cheap for the nintendo 64 I love doing these types of videos. I've done several others in the past. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and I like to help fellow collectors add to their collections, especially on a budget. You know, uh, there's many people out there, and I agree that prices have gone up, but there's still good deals. There's still cheap games to be found, especially if you go loose cart. I did a video on the Nintendo 64 a few years back sharing 10 good and cheap games. And in today's video, I'm gonna take additional 10 games and share with you. These games are far from perfect. They have a few flaws, but they hold a lot of value. And if you haven't checked these games out, I think you're in for a treat as many of them offer lots of gameplay options and many of them have multiplayer functions as well. So sit back, relax, here we go. First up is a game that probably several PC enthusiasts would avoid, but if you're a console gamer and haven't checked out Command & Conquer, the N64 version is not bad. It's the entire first game in 3D, and so there's the full campaign, both sides, as well as additional missions. Now moving it around with the C-Stick is not perfect. It takes a little bit to get accustomed to, 
but there's a lot of value here. There's a lot of replayability and a lot of fun. There isn't a multiplayer option and there is some limitations for what the N64 can do. And I do wish there was mouse support, but you know, you get aside that and you look at the cost of this game, it's cheap, you can find it. And if you do experience it, I think you're gonna enjoy this. Give it a chance. One of Rare's overlooked games is Jet Force Gemini, offering single player and a tagged on multiplayer experience. This game is huge. The worlds are huge. It does offer traditional Rare gameplay experience. You have to try bowls in each level and the bosses are epic, many of them taking several minutes to take down very challenging game but if you can get past these shortcomings i think you're in for a treat i know there's many out there that may have not experienced this game relatively cheap and if you don't have a nintendo 64 and you have an xbox one you can check it out on rare replay another way to check out this rare classic and i do think it's a solid game shortcomings and all it gets a thumbs up for me. N64 had an abundance of racing games and one of my favorites is Extreme G. Now it does have some control issues but if you can get past this imperfect racer there's many modes, different vehicles that you can choose from in this futuristic racer. A lot of fun to be had and I really have enjoyed this one. You know this takes me back. One of the first racing games I actually checked out on the Nintendo 64. There is one to four multiplayer options, and I think that's gonna add some value to this, especially playing with friends. And, you know, I like the track design, I like the soundtrack. And, you know, if you're into those futuristic racers, I think this is a solid pick and relatively cheap. You know, many of these games that I show on this list, well below 20 bucks, even cheaper than that if you shop around and I think there's going to be many fans out there and people remember this one. Often a Nintendo overlooked gem is Pilot Wings 64, an early release. You know, many people pursued and loved playing Mario 64, but this game offers its own unique experience and if you give it a chance, you are in for a treat. The control in this game really makes it amazing. You're playing uh, one of many various games and challenges and you have to earn licenses and there's a lot of depth to this game if you give it a chance. I really like the jetpack missions as those tend to be ones I enjoy the most but I really enjoyed playing this one and it offers a very unique experience. I really wish Nintendo would make another Pilot Wings as this is one of my favorite original early Nintendo 64 games and if you haven't checked it out, it's well worth going back and enjoying this experience. Well worth pulling out your Nintendo 64 for this gem. Well, I like the original better. Robotron 64 offers a unique, updated experience, control options, a one or two player game, and there are a ton of levels, 200. Hidden secrets, weapons, enemies, and there's just a lot of gameplay here and well worth checking out if you haven't already because you know this to me is a great follow-up to the original they, they tried to update it and you know there's a playstation version as well i like the n64 version due to the control as it's a nice setup on the original controller and that's what i love about this game it still has the intense gameplay of the original with updated graphics well worth checking out, and if you haven't played it already, I recommend going back and checking out this one. Another excellent racer is Star Wars Episode One Racer. You may have your own opinions of the movie, but this is a fun game. Taking several characters and adding new environments that weren't in the movie and making a wonderful, fast, intense racer. It's one of the fastest games, I think, racing wise for the Nintendo 64 really really enjoyed this one I played this on PC Dreamcast but the N64 one is good you know there is an updated version you can get on the switch but you know I still like going back to this one you know it, it you know it's a little clunky looking but if you're playing this on original Nintendo 64 
you know, this has several options. I love that it has some multiplayer options, but the track design really is what keeps me coming back. There's branching paths and fairly challenging too. You can go so fast too. I love that you can uh, upgrade your pod and you can just really, really get intense feeds, especially later on in the game while we're checking out. Next up is an overlooked puzzle game and that's Tetrisphere. And this offers a very unique experience on the Nintendo 64. Lots of different modes. I do recommend the tutorial as this plays a lot different than a traditional Tetris game. It's, it's 3D kind of view and perspective and lots of different modes. I really enjoyed that it changed it up. Now, I'm terrible at this game, but you know, I had several people recommend it. Hey, give it a shot. I do recommend playing several games that kind of get into your flow. As once you understand the gameplay mechanics, you'll enjoy this one a lot more as I did. And one that, you know, I'm kind of been in the puzzle games lately, and this is definitely one I'd like to go back and check out as there is a lot here going on. It's not just a straight up puzzle game. There's a lot of strategies and mechanics that make this one fairly complicated, but I do recommend going back and giving this one a shot. The original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is very affordable. It's not as good as the second one, and there's some issues with this port, but put that aside, this is still an excellent game. If you haven't checked out this franchise, this ongoing long-standing franchise, go back to the original, you're not going to be disappointed with the original Tony Hawk. I felt that the character models were well done and it has great gameplay. A little bit slower than the PlayStation version, I do believe. But once you get the controls down, I'm not that great at this game, but it's excellent. If you're a big skateboarding fan or want to experience a good example of the 90s, look no further than this game. Next up is an overlooked Turok game, and it's Turok Rage Wars, and it plays more like a Quake 3 arena style first person shooter, and I really like this game. Now it does have a bug in the original Black Cart release, which Acclaim later sneezed out a fix, which is very expensive, but the original release, which is real cheap, a bug in it in which uh, frag tag and the uh, cooperative trials mode doesn't work right. And, you know, aside from that, tons of modes, tons of options here, lots of fun to be had with friends, by yourself. Uh, you know, this is excellent. This is overlooked. This is an overlooked game and relatively cheap. Totally recommend it. So much fun here. I worked at a GameStop when this came out and it was fairly popular during that time that, you know, that late 90s release and this kind of, you know, sneezed out. And a lot of people overlooked it or didn't know it was even on the console. But if you give this one a chance, definitely awesome. I'm a big fan of arcade sports games and Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey on the Nintendo 64 is awesome. In fact, it's one of the cheapest games that I'm recommending today. You can get this one very cheap, lots of different original players and teams, and you can choose your favorite especially if you're a hockey fanatic, you're gonna love this. It has four player multiplayer options, so you can play this with friends. It's got fluid animation, and all I can say is if you're a fan of these kind of early 3D sports games, especially arcade style sports games, you are gonna love it. Now, is this realistic hockey? No, it's not realistic hockey, but it's fast and furious, and things that make an awesome video game. I found myself compelled to want to play more as I am a big fan of these types of games. I haven't played this one a ton, but I wanna thank everybody who recommended me to check this out. And now I'm gonna recommend it to others because this is solid and affordable. So those are my 10 picks that you can find for cheap N64 games that are still fun to play. What did you think? Do you agree with this list? Did you check out my other video in which I share 10 additional games? So you may have comments like, why didn't you pick this game? You may want to check out another video because I might have chosen the games that you are wanting to recommend there. Anyways, do you have other picks? What are some other good and cheap games that you recommend for the Nintendo 64? In the comments below, 
Make sure to say them and explain why you think they're a good pick. And just want to thank everybody for coming to my channel. I offer a wide variety of content covering everything from Atari to Xbox. I do bad games, I do collection videos, I do ranking videos, and a whole lot more. Look forward to sharing many more videos with you. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock. You have a good day. The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about good and cheap Nintendo 64 games, that's right. I have a few N64 games in my collection, and I love collecting for this classic console. And you know, there is approximately near 300 titles in North America, but there, there are countless classics on this revered console. And I'm gonna to talk today about some of the cheaper and still fun to play games that you can find right now. And so this is a list. There are many others that I could have chosen from. And I wanna hear what you think of my picks and in the comments below. So let's get going. All right, first up, first up is Rogue Squadron. Rogue Star Wars Rogue Squadron was one of my favorites that I loved playing on my Nintendo 64 back in the day. I remember flipping through an Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine and just, just drooling over the pictures. I, I love the starship battles in Star Wars, all the movies, you know, there was, there was some classic ones, Return of the Jedi comes to mind, Rogue One. And in this game, there is lots to do. There's all this backstory that you get to experience in the Star Wars universe. And so there's a lot of content here. If you love Starfighter battles and are a Star Wars fan, definitely Rogue Squadron is a game for you. There's, there's definitely replayability because you get medals for accomplishing, you know, gold, silver, or bronze when passing. There's uh, each stage, there's secrets. There's lots to discover in this game and I really enjoy playing it still to this day. Next up is kind of a overlooked rare classic on Nintendo 64 and that's Blast Corps. And this game essentially you are clearing the way for uh, a nuke. You're, you're, you're clearing the path just demolishing various buildings and things in terrain and it, there, there's a lot to do in here and it's a lot of fun. Pretty much the, the focus of the game is destroy things with different vehicles. And so it's not perfect, but you know, it was an early N64 classic and I know that there's some fans out there, but some others may have not given it a try. Also, this is on Rare Replay. If you have an Xbox One, uh, that's a way to experience it as well. But this, this game has a lot of content to it and I do recommend it. If you haven't played it, it is an N64 classic. All right, Jesse, good buddy of mine. He's a big fan of this game. And I actually started working at a GameStop around the time when this game came out. And so Perfect Dark really is, uh, for some people, a better version of GoldenEye. Now, there's fans that love this game and there's people that don't like it as much as GoldenEye. There's the, the big focus here is on top of a great story, it actually, the multiplayer I think is better in Perfect Dark. Uh, I think it pushed the N64 to its limits. Now there's also the, X, the Xbox Live version of this is updated, so that's another way of playing this. But if you wanna play Perfect Dark on a classic N64, it's a, it's a great way to go. Uh, multiplayer is fantastic. There's so many options in this game setting that up. I mean, there's, I, I really love all the options they give you and, and really for multiplayer, it's it's one of the best on the console. So perfect dark, definitely. All right, I'm a big fan of the Desert Strike series. There was many different ones made on PlayStation, N64, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and classic computers. Uh, and so Nuclear Strike, you have a helicopter and you're going around with various missions, you're escorting things, you're blowing things up. Uh, there, there's a lot here to enjoy. And if you like the Desert Strike series and you have an N64, Nuclear Strike's pretty good. It's also fairly affordable. You can still find this relatively cheap. It's definitely probably on the uncommon side, but I definitely recommend you checking it out. You can't talk about 
classic N64 games without bringing up wrestling. Now, I'm not a wrestling expert, but there are many, many good N64 wrestling games. The game I'm going to be showing you is not the best. Uh, I think No Mercy, uh, there's people that debate what's the, what's, the best, what's the best N64 wrestling game. And so this is probably in the top three, and it's WCW NWO Revenge. And what I like about this game is it gets the gameplay right. It feels like a wrestling game. It feels with the, the grapples, the holds, the moves, the players. There's lots of customization in this game. Um, you know, it doesn't have the best customization of any of the N64 games, but there's enough here to enjoy with friends, four player action, different arenas, different settings. And so I, I, for a wrestling game, especially for a casual wrestling enthusiast, you're gonna love this game and it's relatively cheap. You can find it anywhere. And really, Nintendo 64 had some other ones too. WrestleMania 2000 comes to mind uh, on top of No Mercy. I think No Mercy is probably one of the, one of the best games on the uh, wrestling library for Nintendo 64, but that's a little bit more expensive. But if you're on a budget, WCW NWO Revenge. Now, there's lots of racing games on Nintendo 64, and you know, for me, I actually enjoyed San Francisco Rush. Now, the graphics are a little rough, but what I like about this game is the branching hidden secrets when you play a track. And so it's a lot of fun to play. I really think that they did a good job of just making a fun racing game. I'm more of an arcade style racing game enthusiast versus like a sim. And so if you like that kind of arcade style racing, you're gonna love San Francisco Rush. Now, some people think that Rush 2 is better. I'm not gonna argue with that, but I do like some of the branching paths. There's more of that, and the soundtrack I think is a little bit better with the original Rush game. Now, this is an overlooked multiplayer game, I think, on the Nintendo 64. It often gets overlooked for GoldenEye. But uh, 007, The World Is Not Enough, is actually a, a pretty good game. The single player campaign is fairly decent and the multiplayer options are great. And so I, I think if you if you play Perfect Dark and GoldenEye to death and you're looking for something else to play on a Nintendo 64 and find this, it's a very affordable uh, option for people looking for maybe playing a different map that you haven't memorized. Uh, there's lots of different options of setting up multiplayer and I found it to be pretty decent. This next one is a lot of fun. Uh, it will disorient some people playing it, but Forsaken 64 is another great multiplayer option. Uh, it is well done. I do like what they did in this kind of futuristic ship 3D environment. Um, you know, it's not gonna be for everybody, but it's really cheap. And again, another multiplayer option, if you're looking for something different, maybe you've played some of the other classics to death, then Forsaken 64 is great. Next up, you know, I talked about this in my Joust video slightly, but uh, Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits Volume 1 for the Nintendo 64. Now, there's lots of classics on here, including the original Robotron, Joust, uh, Sinstar, uh, Root Beer Tapper, and Spy Hunter. And so, is it perfect? No. But if you're looking for some great arcade classics and you don't want to go the Namco route, then this is an option. You know, Robotron 2084 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it's well done on this console. And so I definitely recommend this if you're a classic arcade enthusiast. It's a nice compilation for the Nintendo 64, which had limited software. Now, this next one is Ken Griffey Jr.'s Slugfest. If you're a baseball fan, look no further than this. I think it's one of the better baseball games on the Nintendo 64. And you know, whenever I look at like a sports game, it's just like my racing preferences. I prefer to play kind of a, a, a an arcade style game versus a sim. And so while there's some great other sports games on the Nintendo 64, I kind of gravitate to kind of more of the arcade style. And Ken Griffey Jr.'s Slugfest is a nice marriage of like being fairly accurate to the time, but it's a lot of fun to play. I found myself playing, uh, going back and playing this. Uh, man, I really do miss playing baseball. Those are my 10 picks. Now, I wanna hear in the comments below, what are your picks? What would you pick for value picks, good and cheap, for the Nintendo 64? You know, it's a great console, and I think sometimes people play like the top 40 stuff, but if you dig a little bit deeper, there's, there's kind of like a, a, a B tier group of games that I think 
are wonderful to play and often overlooked. And so I picked some of these in this group, but there's some other classics that I think everybody knows about. So I wanna hear your picks. I do wanna hear about them or your stories. I also love to hear about your stories and connections to playing these games because you know those are some, some fond memories of people growing up with the Nintendo 64. And so I wanna thank you. I tried something a little bit different with this video. Yes, I experimented with green screen. And you know, it's just something I always try to kind of pursue some different things with my videos, uh, trying to push myself. What can I do? And so thank you so much for the ongoing support. I look forward to doing further videos and experimenting with some different things. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell for upcoming notifications. I do upload videos every week. Thank you so much. You folks are great. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you take care. The immortal John Hancock, and today I'm revisiting the Nintendo 64, looking at some overlooked video games that I think are worth going back and playing. Like many people, I think it's easy to just go back and play the top 10 of each library. You know, Mario Kart 64, GoldenEye, the Zelda games, Super Smash Brothers. But you know, the Nintendo 64 library had a lot of games that were great, not the best, that are worth going back and replaying. Today, I choose five of those games that I think are worth it. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. First up is Battle Tanks Global Assault, the follow-up to the original Battle Tanks. The N64 sequel is pretty awesome. It's got lots of different modes. There's a pretty robust campaign. What's really nice about this game is all the different ways you can play it. There's many different modes in multiplayer. And the other cool thing is that you can play them single player with bots. Many different levels and multiplayer even has additional features and levels that aren't on the other one. So lots of cool things. I really enjoy this game. It's fast and furious. The graphics are better than the original. Lots of power-ups to get and things to unlock. As you progress in the game, you do unlock additional tanks, which then you can use in many of the multiplayer features. I found this game to be a great one player game as well as playing multiplayer. At the time there was a lot of games that had to do with vehicle deathmatch, you know, with the Twisted Metal and the Vigilante 8 series come to mind. This holds up. I really enjoyed all the multiplayer options this game has and I really do enjoy that you can play the multiplayer mode with one player using bots and so lots of different power-ups make this game enjoyable and so you can choose how many computer opponents you can go against and you know the more opponents the more difficulty it becomes different tanks have uh, different abilities some are faster some have great power while the first battle tanks was decent this one improves upon it i do recommend it over the original if you're looking for an arcade style vehicle combat game look no further than battle tanks global assault up next is the 3d platformer chameleon twist there was two of these made for the nintendo 64 the first game does have some multiplayer options so i do give it the advantage and it's a cute platformer. It is fairly difficult, and I'm going to show you why I recommend it. As Davy the Chameleon, you are using your tongue as a weapon and a mechanic to jump around and solve various puzzles. Fairly decent sized levels. You are collecting collectibles, crowns on each level and they're scattered about and some are very secretly hidden and tough to find. Each level has kind of like a gimmick and 
you have to figure that gimmick out and get through to the next stage, to the next part of each level. This is a game in my younger years that I probably wouldn't have explored. But now that the N64 has been out, and this is a game that I personally overlook, it's time for me to go revisit these games that were decent on the platform that are in my collection. I found the boss fights to be pretty challenging. I do have to say the camera, uh, you sometimes fight with a camera. This is not a perfect platformer. I found the mechanic to be pretty interesting. And Chameleon Twist, you can't go wrong with this game. While there are many fans of this game, this is an overlooked racing game that is awesome. It has great single player and multiplayer features. I really was excited to go back and revisit this awesome racer. Multiplayer options, including Beetle Battle. You can also race any track with a friend in two player mode. I really have enjoyed this game. I've heard this from countless other N64 fans. You gotta check this out. You gotta play this game. And finally, I have gone back to check this amazing racer out. Three, two, one, go! Beetle Adventure Racing has amazing track design. And so pretty much if you play uh, the championship single player mode, how it works is that you have to finish in the top three of each race to move forward to the next race. So there's three challenging modes. And what, what's kind of cool too is there's these branching paths on each level and your goal is to collect bonus points and get all the points on each level there's unlockables and so if you get 50 points on each level then you get a continue which helps you as the game progresses and gets more challenging you can use one of your continues to continue racing the level design is really what makes me keep coming back each level includes tons of hidden secrets there's nitro that is on each level which gives you a boost of speed there's a couple times in which i want to race by hitting nitro and it's nice it's got it's got uh this is the very decent racer and i know there's fans of this game but there's several people that may not know about it it's just one of those games that's kind of drifted into semi-obscurity and what I like about this too is that even for a loose cartridge, it is fairly inexpensive. And so, uh, you know, if you're going the loose cartridge route where you just want to pick up a copy to play, this game is fairly inexpensive. And so I found this game to be very enjoyable. Uh, it's got good graphics, good gameplay. You can choose different cards. You can unlock different things. Beetle Battle is another four player mode that you can play lots of fun with friends and so this is a great game to either play single player or if you want to do multiplayer this is a fun option of the games that I show today this is probably the one that I am going back to play first I really found myself getting into this game what tricks is a unique puzzle game and I'm really glad that I revisited this n64 title that I probably passed up many many times back in the day what tricks has many different modes classic it's got multiplayer it's got challenge it's got a practice mode and a pro mode so i'm just going to show you classic this game has a simple premise you're raising terrain to create reservoirs dropping water in the reservoirs and making sure the water doesn't spill off your table and all this has a score factor. Uh, it is a very challenging game. It is difficult. I recommend playing this several games before forming an opinion of this game. I'm not good at this game whatsoever still, but I did find it interesting. I've never played a puzzle game quite like this. I do recommend this game because it's a very different style puzzle game. And there is some multiplayer options as well. You use fire to lower the water levels. If you're looking for a puzzle game, look no further than Wetrix. I love the Nintendo Micro Machines game and the N64 version of Micro Machines is amazing. Single player and multiplayer options. Up to eight players can play. 
uh, players can share an N64 controller. I thought that was a cool feature. I'm mostly going to show the single player option here. Lots to enjoy about this game. So in single player mode, there's lots of different options here. Head to head, challenge, time trial, single race, etc. And so it's really neat. Uh, the challenges are pretty neat to go and complete. But as you progress, they get harder and harder. This game kind of takes me back to the days of the Nintendo. There's a lot of variety in the different vehicles and, you know, especially like with the tanks here, you can blast people kind of reminiscent of kind of RC Pro-Am. And so I really enjoyed seeing some, there's a lot of strategy into not only racing the tracks, but taking out your opponents. You unlock prize cars as you go, and that's pretty sweet. I think it's a great competent racer that's fun. It is sometimes hard to keep track of your car, but overall, I think it, it's awesome. It's got a lot of different features. And if you're a fan of Micro Machines, look no further than Micro Machine 64. So there you have it. Those are the games I chose for part one of games that are overlooked on the Nintendo 64 that are worth going back and revisiting. What do you think? What's on your list? Comment below as the games you mentioned might be featured in a future video. I wanna thank everybody out there for the ongoing support. Many of these recommendations came from people who have commented on previous videos. Thank you so much for the recommendations. Many of these games I haven't played in a long time. It was nice to go back in my game library and play some of these classic games that still hold up, especially Beetle Adventure Racing. I definitely see myself going back and playing that a lot more. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care. The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm showcasing how to replace your N64 control stick. I'm a huge N64 fan, I love the games, I play a lot of N64 games, and I've worn out a few controllers. This is one of my controllers, and it is the analog stick, sometimes wears out. And so, there's a lot of replacement analog sticks out there, this is one by Old School Games, and it's the Sharpshooter N64 stick. And I'm going to showcase, you know, how to take apart your N64 controller, install it, and see how it goes. Let's check it out. All right, I'm using Robotron 64 as a way to test this analog stick. There's a lot of games that you can use, Super Smash Brothers, GoldenEye. But, you know, this gets pretty frantic, and you have to have accurate controls to get far and be successful with this game. And so I'm using the analog stick. It's working okay. But you know, definitely, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of give in with the analog stick, and it's it could be a lot better. I want to first show you the problem that you have with a worn stick on an N64 controller. And so, here is my Atomic Purple N64 controller. I got this used. I've used it quite a bit. I played a lot of Rogue Squadron, and you know, you can tell when a stick is going out when you can shake the controller and the, and, the, and the stick is wiggling like that. And so you're gonna have less accuracy on control. That That's an issue, okay? Especially if you're playing you know, Super Smash Brothers, GoldenEye, etc. Especially a lot of games that rely on this control stick. You're gonna have problems. And so on a nice controller, and you know, I, I uh, have one of the fun colors here and and when you shake it it does it, it shakes very little and so that is a healthy stick in a controller especially if you're buying a controller you want to make sure that this doesn't wiggle a little bit when you when you shake it like this and so the difference you know showing that one again okay it's it's really bad and so this one is a tighter stick you're gonna have better control and so on these expensive controllers there's some aftermarket companies offering aftermarket parts. 
and this is the sharpshooter by old school games and this is just one option there's there's other options out there and we're gonna go check this out and so I'm gonna show you how to install this all right on the back side there is one two three four five six seven so there's seven screws in the back of the N64 controller there's also two inside there don't forget those you have to unscrew those and so I usually have a small container where I place the screws in and let's go ahead and unscrew these make sure to do this underneath the towel so if your screw comes out it's easy to locate I hate missing screws next up you have to take this screw this screw and this screw out do not take this tiny black screw out and you know that's the next step next thing is you have to detach this from the actual PCB and this thing's kind of hard you can do it with your fingernail if you have fingernails if not a small Phillips just be careful and detach it like so and there you have it it has been detached and you are gonna use these screws again so you want to keep those screws and keep those for your replacement now it's important to note it's important to note that these can be fixed it's a big pain and so if you have a lot of time on your hands there is videos out there that show how to how to fix these original N64 analog sticks and so this is just a more convenient way that I'm showing and you know it costs but there is a way to fixing these and I've, I've seen it before and so I haven't tested it myself but you can so don't don't throw these out all right the one on the left is the replacement old school and it has a 4-1 in the bottom left hand corner and this is the original and it has a four and so the the plastic is a little bit off color as well so the one on the left is the replacement the one on the right is the original so it is important to ask if something's been replaced you know i personally think a replacement's fine some people don't like that some people like all original parts so all right you gotta insert this pad back into this spot and make sure it it all lies flat you want to make sure this small pad here fits takes a little bit to do but yep yeah. you also want to clean it up if it's dirty or dusty you want to clean up anything in in your controller while you have it and so you have that now, in putting this cable, this wire back in, you want to make sure that the white cable is on the left hand side. And it only goes one way. So there you go. Make sure it's installed. You want to make sure that that white cable is on the left hand side when you install it back into the controller. You want to make sure the shoulder buttons are placed properly back in to the proper setting. The left and right buttons uh, only go one way. And so before you snap your case on, you also want to make sure to clean up around, uh, you know, the edges here, if you wish. You know, there's a lot of gunk and stuff. And so that's something to do. These controllers can get pretty gross, especially on the outside cases. So what you can do is you can take this and a Q-tip and you can clean your N64 controller on the outside. It gets pretty gross, especially like outside you can get like, just it just gets nasty. And so I recommend doing this. I mean, you know, if you're using your N64 controller or any controller for that matter, you know, take care of it. You know, the longer you, the more that you take care of a controller, the better it's going to be and you know it, i think there's some pride in the cleaning something up the hardest screws to put back in are the ones in the memory card far in there and so i do recommend a magnetic screwdriver to put them back in it's much easier 
I don't have one on me, but you know, I want to recommend that. It will make your life easier. And there you have it. It is installed correctly, and I'm going to go test it on the same game and see if I can notice a difference. Oh yeah, this is controlling a lot better, a lot more tighter control. And you know, for a lot of people, a lot of people may have not even thought about replacing the analog stick, but N64 controllers are getting harder to find, you know, and this is something to consider when you are hunting for an N64 controller. You might be able to get a discount on, you know, a, like a rare color controller. And so these are the types of things that can save a controller and give it like a second life. And so, yes, I think it, I think it is worth uh, investing in some of these, especially if you're playing your N64 quite a bit. Yeah, this is fun. I'm just uh, now enjoying this game. <laughs> so there you have it. I've installed a couple different sticks by different brands on my N64 controllers with mixed results. And so this one's okay. You know, $14.99 would be my only complaint. Uh, there's some other ones available on eBay and elsewhere that are cheaper. But, you know, again, uh, the results vary. So this one worked. I'm really happy about that. I, I think that I would recommend this if you have, like, you know, an expensive N64 controller, first party, you know, especially, you know, the, the, the different colored N64 controllers. This might be a good replacement. I also think it's important to know if you're selling the controller, you need to let the buyer know that you did replace the stick. And so... There's, there's sometimes a little gray line there, you know, if you don't, if you're not using original parts on a controller and you're selling it, I think you need to let the buyer know that you did that. Hope this video helps. Thank you so much for people continuing to tune into my humble channel as I march towards 80,000 subs. I'm really close and I had a lot of fun doing this video. I haven't done an N64 video in a while. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care. You know, of the uh, nearly 300 games released on the N64, um, I know there's less than that, but around that, uh, I have pulled out what I feel is worth mentioning. And there's others. Um, you know, again, like I've said before, the N64 library was a love or hate relationship, and um, I feel that um, there's several, several classic, amazing games on it um, amid uh, a, a, a huge library of garbage, but there's, there are some several A-plus gems that I would have fun playing today as much as I would um, playing when it came out. So let's start off with just mentioning uh, essentially what the system was built around, Super Mario 64. And that game uh, t today still holds up, amazing game. Um, again, you know, Nintendo really, really having several, several quality titles on their system. Uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers, uh, again making a, a debut uh, franchise on the N64. Um, still uh, as popular today as it was years ago. Uh, Star Fox 64. Um, I, I this is my favorite Star Fox of, of all of them. Uh, fun multiplayer. Uh, definitely um, initial one of the first games to uh, use the Rumble Pack as well. Uh, Paper Mario, kind of uh, uh, a light-hearted RPG. Um, Again, um, I, I think it uh, it really really got the essence of the Mario games into a into a fun game. Uh, Mario Kart 64, uh, some say, is uh, still to this day one of the best uh, Mario Kart games, and it's hard to disagree with them. Just uh, good all around. Uh, Zelda games really really. Uh, took off on the N64. Um, this guy right here, need not say the name, i just show you, this is the collector's edition by the way, uh, the gold card first edition run. Um, uh, you know, uh, amazing game, followed up by not as good but still great game, Majora's Mask, game collector's edition, 
Also has like a um, action foil sticker on the uh, cart. Uh, pilot wings. Pilot wings was uh, again a, a, a classic. Um, uh, definitely um, improving upon uh, the Super Nintendo version. Uh, <laughs> when you're talking about classics, you definitely got to mention Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Uh, set the bar high for uh, console shooters and um, you know honorable mention goes to Perfect Dark. Now a lot of people don't like Perfect Dark as much as Goldeneye. I thought they did some things better and some things not as good um, but uh, again both of them need to be mentioned on games to care about about the N64. But you know Nintendo wasn't the only ones to make outstanding games. Uh, obviously Rare made uh, Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. Um, Rare also did Banjo Kazooie, which um, is a uh, a great platform title. Uh, a strange little game, Space Station Silicon Valley, um, is is a, is a, is definitely a a, f a fun little game and odd um, for racing. Hydro Thunder, uh, boat racing. There's not a lot of boat racers out there. Uh, Hydro Thunder is an, is a great a great game to get for the system. Uh, the best Star Wars game uh, on the system, in my opinion, uh, Rogue Squadron. The amount of content they put in this game is amazing. And the commentary and the extras, A+. Plus. You can get this game, usually about 10 bucks. Really, really recommend it um, for Star Wars fans. Um, <clears throat> You know, Turok kind of became a laughing stock, uh, you know, in the days of the PS2 and Xbox. But back in the day, uh, this game gets overlooked a lot, and it's a, it's essentially a multiplayer version of Turok. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. I recommend it for any first-person shooter fans. Uh, get this game for the N64. You will not regret it. A lot of fun. Rare made another gem, uh, Jet Force Gemini. Um, uh, again, kind of a third person, uh, uh, kind of a platform shooter, kind of hard to explain. Um, had some uh, multiplayer aspects for it as well. Um, definitely recommend it. Uh, Killer Instinct Gold, uh, one of the few fighting games that was worth a darn on the N64. Uh, Gauntlet Legends, a uh, really good arcade port of uh, a fun arcade game. And here's an unknown game, Blast Corpse. Uh, again, uh, a lot of fun done by Rare. Um, not anything really like it on any other system. Doom, Doom 64, uh, a very good version uh, uh, in... Um, uh, using the uh, N64 hardware, some, some stunning graphics. Rayman 2 uh, by Ubisoft, uh, a really good platform. It sometimes gets overlooked. Uh, Asteroids Hyper 64, kind of a neat uh, two-player simultaneous version of Asteroids. And, uh, you know, I hated Episode 1. I really did. But this, this game is fun. And uh, very cheap, by the way, too. You can usually get it for, again, under probably 5 $7 so you can get the game. Well, like any system, and I'm sure collectors are watching this, they probably know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, well, what do you think is rare or odd about this system? Well, here we go. Here is probably one of the most, most terrible game fighting games I've ever played. And that's including Atari Jaguar bad fighting games. Uh, Beast Wars Trans Metals. It was a blockbuster exclusive, and it it just should should have never been made. It's like essentially a half program game that they decided to sell uh, to to rent, and it's it's terrible. Ogre Battle '64, one of the few art, uh, strategy RPG games uh, for the for the game system. It's it's amazing. Pick it up, spend the money. You won't regret it. Uh, everybody talks about uh, Superman 64 being, being you know, some people ask me, what is the worst game on the system? I would say this is. Um, like 
Superman 64, just terribly unplayable. What's worse about this is this is a um, kind of a spiritual successor uh, from the Interstate 76, I, I do believe, uh, series on the computer, or at least it's related. And um, it just, it's terrible that um, uh, this, this turned out to be so bad, so bad. Uh, Star, Starcraft 64, another oddity. Um, you know, nobody played it on the N64. Everybody got the PC version, and for good reason. PC version's better in every way. Don't get this. And so, um, yeah, uh, uh, low, low print run. Uh, I worked at a game store when this came out, and we got very few of these. And I kind of come down to the final four that I think are pretty tough to get boxed. Uh, Bomberman 64, second attack. Again, probably a low print run. Pretty hard to get complete. Worms Armageddon. Again, uh, pretty hard to get complete uh, for for a good price. Uh, the famous International Superstar, Superstar Soccer 2000. Again, um, very tough to get um, complete, especially boxed. And then, of course, everybody's favorite rare that they probably won't ever play. And that's Clay Fighter 63rd and 3rd sculptor, Sculptor's Cut. And, uh, again, a Blockbuster exclusive. Um, nobody has the manual. Uh, I spent way too much and got a manual that was a little beat up for my copy. It is now complete. Um, loose. You know, you're looking at 30 to 50 bucks. Box with manual, that's a whole other ball game. And so, um, that is, uh, you know, supposedly one of the hardest games to get. I think finding this complete is, is, is almost as bad. But anyways, uh, this kind of gives you an overview of some of the fun plays, some of the oddball stuff. And um, I hope this helps you out. Thank you very much. All right, so there was lots and lots of um, random items uh, made for the N64. Uh, there's several that aren't pictured in this video. Um, there's a steering wheel. There's a, a joystick controller. Um, be quite honest, like like the other Nintendo systems, um, uh, you're going to use your standard N64 controller for 99% of the games. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of uh, anything other than the ones made by Nintendo. Uh, they made third-party controllers um, for the N64. I have yet to see one that I like and that I like using for my games. Um, uh, Nintendo, like I said, their, their consoles, they made several different colored controllers. Uh, for the Nintendo 64, uh, a lot of them came with uh, came with a console that was exclusive. Uh, they did a packaging variant. Uh, they included an extra controller. Uh, um, this is one of the colors. Also, uh, lime green, um, another kind of an oddity color, harder to get. Uh, my favorite is the smoke, um, see-through like gray. Um, this is what the packaging of a controller looked like. They sold extra controllers. Um, <clears throat> the gold is uh, probably for the release controllers. Um, I do believe there was a, um, a couple oddball ones. This is one of them. Uh, the Donkey Kong 64 banana controller. These are a little bit harder to get um, and they fetch a little bit of money. Uh, there's a couple others but um, that's uh, obviously, they made several different colored controllers. The ones that are um, the the, uh, the these colors, the odd colors, are worth a little bit more. Uh, some of the easier colored ones to get are the you know the green, yellow, blue, and red, um, or black. Um, obviously, uh, there's some other uh, accessories that I do recommend getting um, if you plan on getting any amount of N64 games. Uh, for the bottom of your controller, there is a uh, controller pack 
and that's essentially your memory card for your N64. Though many games could have memory, these guys hold quite a bit. Um, recommend getting some of these, uh, and I do recommend getting the first party ones. They seem to uh, la uh, hold better than some of the other ones. Um, this is very, very important accessory to get, and that's the expansion pack. And uh, like I said, uh, expansion pack in front of your system, it goes there, and um, it's kind of hard to get out. It did come packaged with this little tool, though people have, I've heard people of using all different types of things, but if you use this tool, you won't hurt, uh, hurt your system. Um, uh, but anyways, that's a must. Uh, they did make a, uh, a trimmer pack to use for s several of the games. It does run on AA batteries. The batteries um, in there. And um, <clears throat> used for uh, several different games. Uh, kind of a bummer is that you can't have the tr trimmer pack and the memory card in at the same time. So usually it'll prompt you in the game if you're playing it. Uh, hey, please take out your um, uh, memory card and place in the trimmer pack or whatnot. But anyways, uh, they made some aftermarket ones that combine both, but I find most of them garbage. Stick with the first party stuff. You'll thank yourself. It's made better. Um, <clears throat> they also made a uh, uh, RF switch adapter uh, for the N64 so that it, they could use... Hey, look, does that look familiar? Yeah, it's been used with the other the other previous two consoles. So, again, uh, the return of the uh, doohickey uh, <laughs> adapter, uh, but th this guy has returns. Don't hook your N64 up. It already has issues with graphics. Use the AV cable, but anyways, they did make it, and... Uh, <clears throat> They, uh, one thing I haven't covered a lot with the other systems is they did make a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Game Genie, Game Shark. Uh, the Game Shark is pretty nice to unlock codes and stuff. Uh, there's different versions. Um, I do believe the version 3.3 is one of the better ones. Uh, they did make different versions of it. Um, that's kind of an oddity. Um, now I, I'm not a big used, I'm not like a big code guy. Some people like to... Uh, use them uh, to unlock everything in a game. Uh, this is another oddity. Um, they made these uh, called Shark Bites, which they're specific little memory cards with uh, pretty much all the unlockables of a specific game. And this one was for Quest 64. Uh, again, quite an oddity. Don't find it that often. Um, the other thing that they made, which was pretty interesting, was uh, a, a dex drive where you could hook up your system and pretty much uh, store game saves onto any PC. Um, you could email your game saves to other people. Um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, I f found this at a Goodwill. Uh, I haven't used it, um, probably won't ever either. But anyways, um, <clears throat> the nuts and bolts is definitely get a memory card. Definitely get an expansion pack. Uh, definitely, uh, I think rumble packs are good to have. And stick with the first party controllers. And really, that's all you need for the system. And I hope this helps you out. Thank you for looking at it. Like this, game. this is so nice to unbox a new N64 game. And so here's the box. It's got really nice glossy finish to it. And on the back side... Is a two-player co-op game, kind of neat. The insert looks authentic. Here's the cart. And the manual. Nice full color. Nice quality to it. This is an action platformer, and this is a game that never was released. Now is released, and there's some different versions that Pico Interactive is going to offer. They're going to offer a special edition. So the special edition comes with artwork, a POG, poster, and a CD. And so 
Uh, so yeah, there's going to be some different versions of this game being offered. You can check Pico Interactive for that. This game does require a controller pack to save. And so it's important to know that. The gameplay is simple. You go around collecting things and it's a puzzle platformer. You can get different various weapons. It, there is a co-op mode. I really like that it has a co-op mode offered. And so, yeah, you know, I'm not going to show much on this, on this uh, video, but yeah, it, it's, you know, being an N64 collector, I really like that Pico Interactive is offering this. It's always nice to see the additional games being offered on the N64. There's a, a huge N64 fan base, and the fact that they're offering a complete in-box version, I think that's neat. The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some homebrew N64 games on physical cart. That's right. I went up to the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo, and I came back with two aftermarket homebrew games for the Nintendo 64, talk to the developer, Daniel Savage. And in today's video, I'm sharing these games and some gameplay. These were made for some N64 game jams, and I'm happy to show you what they look like. And you can download these, the link will be below. So sit back, relax, let's take a look. Here is the physical cart that I picked up at the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. 2022, signed by Daniel Savage, number two of 20. There's only 20 copies per title that he was offering at the expo. And, you know, this was made specifically for the N64 Game Jam 2021, and it won. It even has a story, and, you know, you know, programming for the Nintendo 64, especially, you know, primarily by a single person, pretty challenging. And I know he had some support getting this uh, done. And it took two months to do this project. There's more information on his website. The link will be below. And it's really cool. It's got a simple story. This game isn't too long. Uh, it, it's, I got through in about 20 minutes. But well worth it. Well worth it to download and play on a flash cart. Simple controls. You know, use the control pad to move around. And use the analog stick to aim. And I really enjoyed what he's done here. It's got a funny story, lots of sarcasm, and that's my that's my go-to, you know. And I really like what he has done here, you know. These aftermarket games, you know, are are hopefully hopefully opening the door for other people to pursue and make these types of games for the Nintendo 64, um, you know, and offering it on a physical cart amazing i don't know if any more is going to be available what i do know is that you can download and play this on like an everdrive cart if you have one of those um it does state on his website that uh, it, it, this does have trouble running in an emulator so um if you can get it to work great uh but you know it looks like it, it's working on actual hardware which is awesome to see so getting into the game uh, this is the actual gameplay uh, and so you're moving your character around and you're you're pinpointing target spots on these enemies as a satellite comes and takes out the weak points just really cool it's got a cool uh, premise to this I haven't played necessarily a game too much like this so you got to take out this enemy and you know uh, this is uh, a homebrew game and so if you haven't played any homebrew games they're not like a triple A developed title. You know, getting this to run on an N64, very, very, very challenging. And I don't know uh, how much programming you have, but but just getting this to run is just awesome to see that, especially within only two months. I'm trying to take this out, see if I can get it here. Nope, miss. Just got some really neat uh, aspects to this game. And, you know, I really have enjoyed it. And, and uh, you know, uh, is this a looker? No, it's not a looker, but just seeing it run and seeing uh, it was fun to play. I really enjoyed uh, playing this one and seeing what he was capable of doing in a very short time. You know, Nintendo 64 did not have many titles released for it. About 300, around 300 for the U.S. 
and I know there's some import games as well that we didn't get. But nice to see some additional games that people are going out of the way. You know, growing up, there's a lot of people that grew up with the Nintendo 64. So I'm, I think we're going to see other projects. And so I, hopefully, I'm really, really confident and, and hopeful that we'll see other things. But, you know, this is just a simple one, but I, there's only about three chapters to it. So different enemies with different attack patterns. And uh, yeah, you have a time limit. I do like that. I, I normally don't like games with a time limit. Th this works in this game. And so, yes, uh, the only thing I would also would like to see would be a score. And so having a score and being able to like go back and try to best your score would have been a, a nice additional factor. But that's just the old Atari, old school gamer in me. But yeah, I, I really like this. It was just kind of neat to see kind of what he came up with. Again, the focus of this game was size. So you definitely feel that. These these monsters are really large. And, and I think the gameplay works. I haven't played really anything like this. That's always a bonus, a, a, a treat. Daniel's second N64 game jam project is Wizard of the Board. And each game jam has a theme, and this one was Control. I got the same number for both of them. Number two of 20 signed. And really excited about that. It was really nice meeting him. He also had a discussion about homebrew, homebrew projects at the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. Pretty awesome. And here it is. Even has like an introduction with uh, with uh, with a story. And this is a cool one. I didn't know what to think of it when I first saw it. But really, it's like you take like a chess game and make a and combine it with a puzzle aspect to it so it's not just chess it's got a whole like aspect to it and challenging and multiple levels i really like what he did here and it's really thoughtful and creative and another game you know i've played a lot of aftermarket and homebrew games as well as many games across everything from atari to xbox and i haven't played really anything like this so it's really cool so uh, you can choose a, a level. I love that you can do that. And in the level, in the levels, I think there's 18 floors, and they get, it gets more challenging. It does help to have a background in chess and how to move chess pieces, but you don't need to. As you know, you can experiment with this. There isn't a time limit, uh, but the chess pieces I do believe can't touch you. So you're moving around this 3D board. You're you're, you're selecting chess pieces and then using the controller, you're choosing where they move. Uh, you can only move them on appropriate spaces with the X's meaning that's an invalid move. Really like that you can uh, move these pieces around. And so uh, it really is a cool idea taking just traditional chess and chess pieces and putting them in a creative puzzle aspect. Um, I got about halfway through this, uh, you know, and so I'm not going to, I'm just going to show you a little bit. I love that there is a, a story and, and it goes along and, and kind of walks you through. I think the developer has been very clever and I really enjoy these creations and being able to share them with the rest of the world. That's awesome. And I really hope that this is kind of the start of more projects like this. As more people grow up with the Nintendo 64, I bet there's going to be people and developers out there that want to take the limitations and challenges of programming for the Nintendo 64, push themselves to make cool little aftermarket projects like this. And so I really look forward to what Daniel's going to come up with next. You know, these are passion projects. They're not made for big financial gain as you know this took considerable amount of time and you know developers and programmers by day you know they have day jobs and so this is just done in extra time and so really cool to see this come to a physical card as well it's a pleasure to see programmers and developers use their skills to offer creative ideas such as this and I'm really excited to see what else comes from the N64 homebrew community. I know there's other projects out there. This is just a sample. But have you played any of them? 
comment below as I really enjoyed playing this and I'm going to be playing it more. So, what did you think? Have you played these? You can go down to the link below and check them out. If you have uh, an EverDrive, N64 EverDrive cart, you can download, or flash cart, you can download these. So thank you so much. You know, I'm a big supporter of the homebrew and aftermarket scene for multiple different consoles and computers and handhelds. I've covered several of these on my channel. So what I've decided to do is I am making a playlist dedicated to aftermarket and homebrew games and you can check that out the link is below for that and enjoy those thank you so much for coming to my channel if you like what you see consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as i'm uploading content every week different videos different things and you may like what you see so thank you so much you folks are wonderful and beautiful let's keep it positive this is the immortal john hancock and you have a good day there's a new physical release for the Nintendo 64, and that is Xeno Crisis. I have covered this on other platforms, but now it's on physical and offered on digital as well. And really excited. Different regions as well. PAL, you have Japanese as well as North American box art. And so I'm going to unbox this and show you this physical release. So sit back, relax. Here we go. It is so nice to see another 2D arcade style game coming to the Nintendo 64, which didn't have many releases compared to other platforms. And you know, it, I'm, I'm really seeing an uptick in aftermarket games finally coming to the Nintendo 64. And I know there's a lot of 2D fans out there, a lot of arcade fans. This is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, it's on several platforms. So even though I'm showing the Nintendo 64 version, uh, this game's on everything, Switch, PlayStation, uh, you know, PC, you name it. And so here's what it comes with. Very nice, and I'm showing the North American release, but there's other box variations for different regions, PAL and Japanese. So anyways, really sweet to see that. As you know, if you're a North American collector such as myself, you have a box that matches your other games in the region. Awesome to see that, just an extra touch there. And full color manual goes over the uh, story, controls, 10 different weapons, seven arenas, different control options, one or two players. And so this is a fun game. We can do some couch co-op with it. It is very difficult though. So I want to mention that this game is pretty challenging, but yeah, really like what they've done here. And I'm going to show you, here's the physical cartridge. Looks awesome. Love that. Uh, another extra touch they did was on the back, the back side. They have their own custom label on the back. Really like to see that. And here's the game, different languages you can choose. And, you know, story pretty much gotta go check out. You know, there's an infestation of aliens and you're the Marines, you're going in. And what's cool about this game is you can uh, collect dog tags and you can upgrade your weapons uh, after each level. You get a grade on how you play it. There's two different difficulty settings. Uh, I'm gonna play it on easy just to show you a little bit more of the game because it's fairly challenging. Um, and so yeah, uh, from what I've played, it looks like it's, it's pretty close, I do believe, to the other releases. I didn't see any major differences. So uh, I do like the control setup though on the Nintendo 64. I actually think it plays pretty well and you can choose one of two different Marines. So, and then I'm just gonna jump right in. But I really like this game and these types of games, these 2D games, uh, you know, where you're pretty much uh, avoiding enemies. You know, if you've played stuff like Smash TV or Robotron 2084 even, uh, you're gonna feel right at home, but definitely, definitely, probably a little bit more like Smash TV. But yes, uh, you have limited ammo and grenades, and you have to save people, and you collect power ups along the way. You get these dog tags, and then you can upgrade your character in between areas. And so there's boss fights after each uh, area, and pretty tough game. So, anyways. But I, I'm finding I'm really liking the N64 setup here. It, it plays great. And, uh, you know, you have limited lives. But it's just fast. It's a fast game. D different weapons here. Here's a, here's a different weapon. And I 
like a Gatling gun. Pretty awesome. One of the better weapons that I've played so far. So of the seven areas, I've personally gotten to like the fourth area. And this is a game you're not gonna beat in one setting. It definitely it's gonna take repeat play. You may wanna try it on easy first. Uh, maybe you're a hardcore gamer and may wanna try uh, on difficult, but it's very tough. And so this game doesn't hold your hand. Uh, boss fights are pretty intense. But definitely, you know, it's, it'd be like, you know, if this was in an arcade somewhere, I would totally play it as it has that intensity and feel. And just love the, the, the sprite work and the music. It's just a well done game. And it doesn't matter how many different versions come out. Really nice to see this on the Nintendo 64. Much needed uh, boost to the library and other fans of the channel that you know, uh, have different opinions about the Nintendo 64. I'm a huge N64 collector. I, I think it has some amazing games, but we all can uh, agree that there needs to be more 2D games on the Nintendo 64, and this is a nice fit. So, yep, boss pretty intense, uh, and it can kick your butt if you don't watch it. And so, really, s saving your ammo and grenades for the bosses. There's a rank. My rank was pretty terrible. <laughs> So yes, you know, it makes you want to come back and beat your score onward and upward. So you have a um, intermission talks about the, the storyline pretty straightforward. So then you can upgrade and this is, this is where it's, it adds some uh, variability to the game. You can choose your upgrade. You can, you can do health, power, speed, ammo limit, grenades, and grenade power. And so for me, uh, you know, health is pretty important, uh, but especially speed and power. So th that's the ones that I, I try to focus on. But you're gonna have your preferences of how you play. Fun game though, looks great too. And uh, by the way, I'm capturing footage on uh, a Nintendo 64 that's been HDMI modified, Ultra HDMI modified. So that's why it looks so great. Uh, digital ROM too, so you can buy the digital ROM. By the way, if you buy the physical, you get the digital ROM thrown in. I think that's awesome. For collectors out there, they want to keep their game pristine. Um, there you go. Have a pretty good little run here. It's all about conserving your ammo. And different rooms have different bonuses. So you get these like crates and stuff. Very important that you get those ammo crates. But different rooms have different power-ups and uh, you know, you can save people, POWs. Kind of rolling here pretty good. And speaking of rolling, uh, that's a really important strategy in this game to avoid fire and to quickly get from one side of the room to the other. Not doing the best job showing that, but very important strategy. Yeah, but the, the control setup on the N64, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the, the, it's using the C buttons to change fire. Well done. So it's a nice setup here. I really, I really think it is a, a nice fit for single controller use. Area two boss. The usage of grenades on boss fights, as I mentioned before, super important. So that heart, when I got hit, that's how many lives you have. You have. You know, it's one hit one hit death so you can purchase lives too with your hard-earned dog tags Let's see if I can take this boss out oh. wah, wah. So, uh, on easy, there is continues. So you can purchase continues as well. 
super important. Let's see if I can just, just take out the boss here. Come on! Almost have him. Let's get him! This game benefits from playing multiple times to improve your ranking. So you can go over to their website and order this and they have it on many other formats as well as modern platforms. And so I really like releases like this where it doesn't matter what platform you have, you have the ability to play it, both physical and digital. I think that's awesome and it's a great game. I'm a big fan of these type of arena shooters and you know, there's slight differences uh, with a, a couple different releases of this. Uh, you know, I even covered the Neo Geo version on my channel and that was fantastic. So thank you everyone. And is this something you're interested in? Have you played Xeno Crisis? It's even on the Evercade. So that's awesome. And that they have just uh, released it on so many different platforms. And I wanna thank everybody for coming to my channel. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day. There's a new aftermarket game that is available for pre-order, and this is big to small, and this is gonna be available for Game Boy N64 and Dreamcast. Here's the boxed N64 version that I purchased, and I know there's collectors out there that might wanna add this to the library. Pretty cool, full color manual. Here's the cart, and it is a puzzle game and you're taking various animals and guiding them to their food source and it kind of has uh, a gameplay style reminiscent to a little bit of adventures of lolo and some other puzzle games but you can check this out the link will be below where you can pre-order this now among other games fellow collectors here is the n64 gray cart subset 13 games the world is not enough army men air combat Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2, Aiden Chronicles, Bassmasters 2000, Hydro Thunder, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Road Rash 64, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Rugrats the Movie, Scooby Doo Classic Creep Capers, Turok Rage Wars, the hard one, and Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. Thank you so much for checking out these videos. If you made it to the end, congratulations. There's many ways to support me. First and foremost, you watch the video. Thank you so much. You also can give thanks. I have a patron if you want to support me there. And leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching the entirety of this video if you did. You're awesome, and I want to appreciate you viewing my channel and many more videos to come. Many more marathon videos as well as I continue to do these on my channel. Thank you so much. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you take care.